Not too long ago, a judge called me here in Los Angeles. He told me that a young woman who'd come before him for a divorce. She had six children, was pregnant with her seventh. Under his questioning, she revealed her husband was a laborer earning $250 a month. She wanted the divorce to get an $80 raise. She's eligible for $330 a month in the Aid to Dependent Children program. She got the idea from two women in her neighborhood who'd already done that very thing. Yet any time you and I question the schemes of the do-gooders, we're denounced as being against their humanitarian goals. We lived for the early part of my childhood in that public housing community, but my dad, you know, never saw uh, our low-income status as anything but a temporary state of being. And he would never allow us to say we're poor. He said poverty and to say that you're poor is a state of mind. Say low income because that's only a temporary state of your pocketbook. As the 60s gave way to the 70s, the full weight of high taxes and big government came to bear on the country. In the 1970s, at the end of the Carter administration, uh, President Carter himself uh, said that the nation was in a period of malaise. Now, obviously, there were a lot of problems, and that was uh, the fact that we had high inflation, uh, we had very high interest rates, we had high unemployment, and we had a stagnant economy, as well as a shortage of energy. And we had something that the economists said wasn't possible of happening, and that was stagflation. Stagflation occurs when you have rising unemployment and rising inflation. It's the worst of both worlds under the models of centralized planning put forward by people like Galbraith and Keynes. That was never supposed to happen. But it did in the 1970s, and we're on a track to have it happen again.